Hey guys, it's Austin. Welcome to your fifth Roblox GUI scripting tutorial. And as promised in my last video, I'm going to show you guys tweening today. So if you don't already know what tweening is, say you have a frame at the bottom of your screen and you want to move it to the top of your screen up here, except you don't want it to be instantaneous and just change its position like that. You want it to transition smoothly to the top of the screen. That's where tweening comes in. Tweening is a method, well technically three methods, Roblox made for us to get from point A to point B. Point B. And it's not just positions, it's also size and size and positions. Um, that's the three methods. Tween position, tween size, and tween size and position. So I'm going to go on the wiki, search up tweening and you see that they have a tutorial here but that's what I'm here for and I'm just gonna search up the methods individually because I'm teaching you how to use them <coughs> so first tween position this is probably the most useful I see it the most everywhere uh, it's a bool uh, it has one, two, three, four, five, six parameters. Yeah, a udim two called end position, an easing direction, easing style, float of time, and a bool called override. And um, this, but I don't think you'll ever need that. That's some optional function that you, you might want to put in for something. It says tween status. Oh, uh, it has two enums. Cancelled or completed. So, uh, the parameters. Uh, udim2 is... This first parameter is just where it's going to move to. And what a udim2 is, like, a brick's position is represented by a vector3 value, but a GUI's position is represented by a udim2 value. So that's where it's going to end up once it's done tweening. Easing direction, that's either in or out of the screen. Uh, even if it's going inwards towards the screen, you can set it to out and it'll do the same thing. But the easing uh, directions, it'll be a little backwards the way it moves. You'll notice this if you try two different directions on the same tweening method. Easing style, uh, well, let's open a new tab here and go to the enum page for easing styles. The easing style enum determines the way in which tweening will act. Animation demonstrating how each of these act. Uh, yeah, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight options here. <coughs> Linear, sign, back, quad, court, Quint, bounce, and elastic. Um, I'd say the most used is probably bounce or quad. Uh, I don't know. Just have a look over these and yeah, see what you like. Uh, here are the enums right here. Time. This is how much time it takes um, for it to take its course. It can be a decimal or a whole number, integer or float. Override, this uh, pretty much, if it's false, then it cannot be interrupted when it's tweening by another tween. Like, if I put one tween method for a GUI object, and then a, a regular wait, and then another tweening method, then the first tweening method would be stopped and be interrupted by the second one. And then the second one would take over. <clears throat> that's what override is. Then a callback, that's just, uh, like I explained earlier, a function that you don't really need. They don't even go over it here. Uh, so, I'll show you how to use them now. Screen GUI. Um, insert a frame. Let's make it blue. That's a pretty blue. Now it has a border. So, uh, local script. I'm gonna 
wait one second script dot parent tween position udim2 dot new um, we'll come back to that we're gonna make it tween inwards because we're going in towards the screen um, gonna use the style quad and have it have a time of one <coughs> uh, usually you don't need to include these last two parameters except for special cases where you actually need to but these are what I usually use so we'll make it tween from here to here the other end of the screen so first let's try to position it to the end of the screen just so we know ex the exact coordinates of where we want to move it to but I'm picky so I'm gonna scale it first like so um, it's probably around 0.9 yeah 0.9 on the x-axis for scale so I'm just gonna copy and paste that delete those curly braces uh, then replace that 0 with 0.9 or 0 0.9 doesn't matter okay so f7 and as you can see it just moved smoothly across the screen that was very beautiful um, I'm gonna set that to one person so I don't get another client window um, but that's not gonna do us any good just tweening something randomly when we want to make a game so we're gonna hook this up to a click event but we gotta make this a text button and because frames don't have that mouse button one click event so I'm just gonna use my handy dandy class changer plugin to change it to a text button keep all its properties uh, name it button click me text scaled white text uh, area bold. okay we'll use this font good enough uh, script dot parent dot mouse button one click connect function and we want to end it and tab and we can remove that weight since now we control when it tweens and tweens all the way over there but that's not gonna do us much good either because in a game nothing's gonna be one way so we are going to make it tween back when we click it again <clears throat> so for that how are we gonna do that we need to check what position it's at and how are we gonna do that with conditional statements you should have already watched my video on that if you haven't you should go do that now if script.parent dot position equals udim2 dot new uh, then and oops not there else if script dot parent dot position equals udim2 dot new then more code uh, now we gotta fill in these posi positions that it'll be at so uh, the first time we click it it's probably gonna be at its it is gonna be at its current position right here so uh, we can just type zero 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 if its position is zero 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 then tween it to these coordinates like so so then we're gonna check if it's uh, coordinates are the only other possible coordinates it could be these are here we're going to copy paste those there and again for down here it can only be one other coordinate if it's already tweened to the other side of the screen so instead of in we're going to do out because it's going towards the outside of the screen uh, same easing style same time so let's test That is quite beautiful. 
tweening is one of the best things you can do to enhance the performance and look of your GUIs. Um, but tweening position isn't all that we can do. Tween size. So as you can see, it has pretty much all of the same arguments except for this first one, end size. The last one was end position. So uh, let's control H, find tween position, replace with tween size, because I don't want to go over and change all those. Um, so for now instead of getting its original position, we have to get its original size equals Remove those curly braces. Then script uh, dot replace position with dot size. Forgot to do that. <coughs> um, and let's say we want to change it to point five five. Paste that. Um, I'm gonna keep the coordinates except the one on the y-axis there. 0.55. Um, else, if it has already been tweened, tween it back like this. Now let's test it. It's gonna tween all the way down there. And it's not going to tween back because I made some sort of typo in my script. Oh. Mm. Yeah, oops. I put the same UDM2 values on the second, or on the first else if statement. I'm going to click it, click back, and it goes back, back and forth, back and forth. And it's very convenient Roblox has made these methods because without them you'd have to resize and reposition your stuff manually with a bunch of complicated for loops and we wouldn't want that. So uh, the last method I'm going to show you guys is tween size and position. It has uh, the same parameters as the others except it has both end size and end position. This one's a little more complicated because uh, it's a little more complicated to predict the exact coordinates of what you want. So let's read the description. Smoothly moves to get you a new size and position. We knew that. Do, do, do. Okay, below example, tween a frame to the top left of the parent size and resize it down to zero. Okay. So let's make just do something random with tween size and position. I've actually never really seen this used before that I can remember, but maybe you guys can find use for it. Okay, um, since we're tweening both size and position, if we're going to toggle it like this, we can check either position or size because in the end they're both going to be changed. Tween. and position. Uh, what is the first? Okay, the first one was size. So now we're going to add another udem2.new udem and tween it to um, 1, 1, 1, 1. Two dot new one 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 one. Let's try this bad boy out. Boop. And out went off the screen and we can click it. That's because 
uh, if you set something to 100% scale, it's going to go a little bit off the screen. So let's change uh, that to 0.9. Um, wait. I don't know why I put 1111 down here on the bottom because we need to return it to the original position. Okay, now let's try that. <clears throat> go all the way down here, it'll go a little bit off because on some coordinates we went too far. 0.9. Um, yeah, 0.9 isn't good for all coordinates if you're uh, working on the same GUI object. <clears throat> so, yeah guys, that's how you tweening this can be used for a lot of different things uh, it had some examples in the wiki page of the tweening tutorial what I would mainly use it for is for maybe notifications in game or uh, if someone completes a level in their your game and they it shows what they gained how many coins or something they gained at the end of a level uh, or a shop GUI you can click a button to toggle a shop in and on and off the screen. That's pretty much what we did except we just did it with a single button and not a frame. Uh, I might do that in another tutorial. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, please ask them in the comments section. If you want to keep up with me and my group on Roblox, I just released a new game in alpha stage. It's called Nightmare Dash. Uh, that thing I described a minute ago where players complete a level and an end result GUI pops up on your screen, or tweens in rather. Hey guys, sorry about that, the phone rang. Um, a minute ago I was just explaining one of my games that's being developed right now, but I'm gonna not go on about that. And uh, yeah, like I said, if you guys have any questions about tweening, just leave it in the comments or you can private message me on Roblox, whatever you feel like doing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next video.